The story begins with a scene of four high school girls lying unconscious on the beach. They all have pretty hot bodies, but those are not what the plot is about. As they wake up, the girls introduce themselves to each other. This is Asuka, a member of the basketball club and track and field team. The next girl to address herself is Shion, who is wearing her school blazer and has a hobby of playing the piano. The short-haired girl with glasses is Mutsu. She likes reading books and cooking. And the last girl is a girl with long blonde hair named Homare. She tells the others that this isn't the first time she's been left stranded on a deserted island. Now that Homare mentions the island, the other girls eventually acknowledge their current situation. Let's rewind to 12 hours earlier. Floating on the ocean surface are the remains of a plane after a terrible air crash. Homare is in a coma while holding on to a piece of the exploded engine. In her dream, she recalls her younger life, spending time with her survivalist father. They lived in extreme conditions from spring to winter, from the forests to the highest and coldest places. One time, they had to survive by eating moose testicles, the taste of which was so disgusting that it woke Homare up from her coma. The four girls are on a metal board floating in the middle of the sea, and Shion starts whining because of her thirst. Asuka tells Shion to drink seawater to ease her thirst. Homare stops the girl, saying salt water will dehydrate their bodies even more. At this time, they notice a school of flying fish jumping out of the sea. Homare quickly grabs a wooden stick and knocks a fish out. Homare takes off her shirt and wraps it around the fish. She then rolls the wooden stick back and forth to soften the fish and drops its blood into her mouth. Homare kindly shares the fish with the girls, but none of them want to taste the suspicious liquid. After finishing the fish, she puts her shirt back on and still feels comfortable in it. The girls continue their journey on the ocean until the next morning when they noticed an island nearby. As they jump into the water and swim towards the island, they attract a shark due to the smell of blood on Homare's shirt. Facing the shark is just child play for Homare. She calmly throws a cell phone battery at the shark, which gives it an electric shock and scares it away. With the skills she picked up from her dad, Homare teaches the girls ways to survive on this isolated island, including eating cicadas. She shows them how to get pure water, they can get it from a coconut, a liquid filter system, or from distillation. They can also collect rainwater or find a fresh water source. Mutsu and Shion can have a little rest while Homare and Asuka head to the woods to look for fresh water. After a while, as the two contrast in physical status, Asuka can't catch up with Homare and wants to take a rest. Homare gives Asuka cold shoulders and tells her friend that she's fine going alone. The girls then reach the middle of the woods when Homare notices a sawfly, which is a signal of a nearby freshwater source, and the two continue their journey to the deep jungle. Back to Shion and Mutsu. While Mutsu is resting under a tree, Shion finds something and asks her to come close. The girls have found a dried coconut. At the same time, Asuka is so tired that she can't even move. Homare touches the ground and feels the dirt wet. She knows there must be water around here. She digs for some soil, puts it in a small sack, and squeezes the water out in Asuka's mouth. Finally, there's some water for her. Asuka takes the soil sack and sucks for water. She even thinks the water tastes good. But Asuka's world soon collapses after knowing that the sack is actually Homare's sock. Meanwhile, after attempting to crack the coconut, the girls at the beach are hopeless to know it's not only empty, but also a rotten coconut. Suddenly, raindrops start falling. The girls are overjoyed as they don't have to worry about being thirsty, at least for now. Their next plan is to find shelter, but as they're starving, they need to put looking for food as a priority. Homare goes to find some food and brings back a sea urchin, two cicadas, some seaweed, and a mysterious jar of black liquid. They decide to play rock, paper, scissors for a fair dish picking. Shion wins the first round. She picks the sea urchin and enjoys it as a delicious slide of sashimi after Homare seasons it. Asuka aims for the seaweed, as she doesn't want to swallow the other suspicious things. But Mutsu is the one to win the next round, and she picks the seaweed. It seems to be a dead end for Asuka. When there are only two choices left, the dark liquid or the cicadas, Homare lets Asuka choose one herself. She picks up the jar, thinking there's blueberry jam inside. But she immediately vomits after one first bite, because it's actually some animal liquid feces. Homare breaks a cicada in half, digs out its brain with a toothpick, and eats the substance in joyfulness. She gives the last cicada to Asuka. Asuka is touched by such a friendly act by Homare, but she really can't eat it. Fortunately, Mutsu shares half of her seaweed with Asuka. That night, they sleep at the beach, and another day has passed. The next morning, Homare starts putting up a tent so that they can at least have a place to stay at night. 
Asuka looks at Homare with admiration in her eyes, knowing that Homare is becoming a master of survival on this island. Suddenly, Asuka turns whiny, asking Homare to find her food. The other girls admonish her for being all about herself and making her feel embarrassed. Homare is running out of ropes for the tent. She tells the others to stay at the beach while she looks for some more. Asuka volunteers to help her. On the way into the woods, she finds a plant looking like a taro plant. She tries to pull it out and figures it has a turnip root, apart from the fact that the turnip has stripes on it. Homare finds the plant strange and suggests that Asuka not eat it. But the stubborn Asuka doesn't listen to her advice and keeps saying it's fine to eat the plant. Eventually, Homare can't help but tell Asuka to test her allergic range, which is a survival skill to check how one's body reacts to a strange thing. The way to test it is to scrub it on Asuka's skin. If her skin remains the same, the plant isn't harmful. If her skin got a rash, the plant could be toxic. Asuka teases Homare, facing her butt at her friend, not knowing that Homare actually scrubs the turnip on her butt. After a while, her butt got a rash, so Homare has to help Asuka clean up the mess. While Homare is collecting vines for the tents, Asuka lies on the grass because of her hunger. As she reaches her hand out to cover her eyes from the sunlight, a cicada lands on her arm. She quickly grabs it, tending to pick its brain out, but she can't do it. She can't take away such a little life. Eventually, she lets it go, but Homare catches it and flicks its head as if it's a bottle cap. Eventually, the tent is somewhat completed. Shion suggests they build a bathroom, making the other girls speechless. It's nearly dark and Homare and Mutsu are looking for some food at the beach. They take off their clothes and go to the shallow water to forage for snails and clams. After collecting enough hermit crabs, the girls return to the tent and Homare starts making fire with a piece of glass. The girls then sit around the grilling stones waiting for their mouth-watering seafood meal. They are so grateful to finally have a proper meal after many struggling days. Homare tells her friend to eat as much as they want, for she's caught a lot of hermit crabs just in case they need more. Her next plan is to teach the girls to hunt for bigger animals. The girls find a stream in the forest. As they approach the stream, Homare notices a cage in front of which there are some tiny solid black balls. She picks up a ball and sniffs it, realizing that it's rabbit's feces. So the girls quickly make a trap for whatever material they can find. Homare sets up a rope ring to catch the rabbit. The girls go back to their tents right at the moment Shion has finished collecting wooden sticks. She asks her friends if they have got the rabbit yet but Homare tells her it'd take a few days until their trap managed to catch the rabbit. Shion can't help but whine about how they will starve tonight. Homare tells her friend not to worry much, she'll look for something to eat, but which can just be hermit crabs. Seeing that her friend is sick of eating hermit crabs, Homare says she'll dive deeper to look for some clams. The word clam really lifts Shion's mood up. She blissfully waves goodbye to her friends on a journey to the sea, while her friends don't really appreciate her farewell. Asuka and Homare are at the reef. They take off their clothes and jump into the water looking for clams. Underwater, as Asuka is scared of the dark, she looks around for Homare. Homare at the time has been at the bottom, flipping the rock to find clams. She even uses her air bubble as diving goggles to see clearer. Seeing Homare come back, Shion can't hide her joy, rushes to hug her friend and thanks her for the hard work. But her happiness can't last long when she knows what Homare brings back are actually starfish. Homare says those are Northern Pacific Ocean starfish, one of the edible starfish species. When being boiled, these creatures release carbon bubbles which help clean up the metal pot. Shion is still down in the dumps as she can't believe that she has to eat starfish. Homare gives Shion a cooked starfish, telling her to eat it. Shion still hesitates, but when she sees the scratches on Homare's hand, she happily enjoys the starfish and keeps praising the dish. Homare is also happy to see her friend being less complaining. The next morning, Asuka and Mutsu come to check the rabbit trap and find the trap seems to work. They slowly approach the bush, and it's true that there's a rabbit stuck in there. As the rabbit's about to escape, Asuka grabs the rope and pulls it back. Mutsu, with a stick in her hand, is in charge of killing the animal, but she's unable to aim at the rabbit. Eventually, she sits on the ground with disappointment on her face. Doesn't want her friend to cry, Asuka takes the stick and ends the rabbit's life. Shion and Homare are sitting in the tent, suffering from their hunger, when they see their friends come back with the rabbit. Everyone is so excited as it's been quite a while since they last had meat in their meal. They enjoyed every bite of the rabbit meat. When they finish their meal, it's dark. The girls lie on the beach together, feeling thankful for their fullest meal ever since they were left stranded on this island. The next day, Homare decides to explore the island to enhance their survival chances, and she needs one person to go with her. All of the girls volunteer to go, 
So Homare has to choose one of them, who is Mutsu. For their journey, they prepare water, a rope, a knife, and some dried shells. The other girls can't hide the sadness on their face when they have to stay in the tent. After a while of walking along the beach, Homare and Mutsu find Plania, which is an edible plant. They stop to eat it and continue their walk. Until the evening, the girls find a place that looks like a harbor. Homare touches the ground in the area and says that this place has been abandoned for a long time based on the amount of grass growing. At night, they grilled the dried shells to eat for dinner. Mutsu is worried for the other girls that they might do something silly like eating poisonous toadstools and burning the tent. Mutsu and Homare can't even think of them in any positive way. Suddenly, they hear a rustle in the bush behind them. Turns out it's Asuka and Shion who happen to be here for a walk. Never on earth that Homare would believe in those girls. That night, they share a small net to sleep on. The next morning, Homare find the girls some crabs and herbs. She says they'll continue their journey after breakfast. She draws her plan on the ground, following which the four of them will go in different directions and return when they've done walking 1,000 steps. Mutsu counts every step of hers. She eventually finds a Japanese lemon tree in the woods. When the three of them are worried for Shion, she shows up telling the girls there's a house in the forest and asking them to follow her. They're so excited and run after Shion just to figure out the house she mentioned is just a rundown. Homare finds a pair of shears that might be a little rusty, but are still useful enough for them. She hits it with a rock and breaks it into two shears. The girls then use the shears to get some lemons. The next morning, they decide to return to their tent. Homare sees an eight-strand rope near the cliff. It's a bit far, but she wants to use it for her tent. So she ties a rock and throws it off the cliff to test its height. Finding it safe, she jumps straight into the water. After getting the eight-strand rope, she climbs up like Spider-Man. As she's managed to get on the cliff, it starts raining. The girls run back to the tent in a hurry. In fact, staying under the tent doesn't help much. The tent is leaky, and they're still soaking wet. After the heavy rain, a lot of bamboo trees wash the shore. Homare suggests that they use bamboo sticks to make a better roof for their shelter. She then ties them up and pulls them along the beach. As she needs someone to ride the bamboo, Shion and Asuka volunteer to be the riders. It's fun at first, but then Shion gets seasick and starts vomiting. In order to use the bamboo, Homare puts them on fire so that they'll be cracked. Eventually, the girls manage to make a proper roof. The next day, Homare uses a bottle as a magnifying glass and a sharp bamboo stick as a lance to catch a flounder. Shion also wants to be as strong as Homare, so she asks to join Homare for the next day. The next morning, after waving farewell to Asuka and Mutsu, Shion and Homare start their hunting session. Shion sails on a raft while Homare dives around for more fish. After catching a black sea bream, Homare walks back towards the shore. She notices a strange current flowing back into the ocean. She stands on the highest rock looking for Shion, but Shion is nowhere to be found. No matter how she screams, there's still no response from her friend. Asuka and Mutsu are collecting dried wooden sticks when they hear Homare's shout. They immediately head to Homare's place where she tells them that Shion has disappeared and that she could be flown away by the ocean's currents. Asuka questions Homare about why she didn't stick with Shion, but what she receives is just an apology from Homare. Mutsu tells Asuka to stay calm. Then Homare makes a raft to sail out to sea searching for Shion. Although their raft isn't big enough to sail across the ocean, Homare and the other girls are determined to bring Shion back at all costs. Meanwhile, Shion is on her raft floating further and further away from land. She's so scared that she starts crying, but then remembers Homare's words that crying will cause her dehydration, so she tries to calm herself. She sadly sits on the raft, wondering if her friends have figured out her disappearance or not. She really doesn't want to say goodbye to them in this way. Suddenly, she sees a small island not far away. She decides to make a move and sail to the island. She's got to fight for her survival. Asuka and Mutsu are preparing food to welcome their friends. They believe that Homare and Shion will come back. Mutsu is still a little bit worried for Shion, but Asuka tells her she should put their trust in Homare. After a little effort, Shion finally gets to the island, but it is in fact a giant rocky island, which means there's no animal or plants there. On the way, searching for fresh water, she finds a cave, hoping there's some water inside, but the answer is still no. Eventually, she sits at the cave wall and starts sobbing. She really doesn't want to die alone here. Homare is on her way looking for Shion, but no matter how far she sails, it seems impossible for her to find her friend. She wants to get to a higher place to observe, so she uses her bamboo oars as a pivot and jumps up into the sky. 
She finally sees a faraway island. Xion is losing hope. She's now accepting the fact that no one can ever find her. Suddenly, she hears Homare's voice, and as she looks up, her beloved friend is in front of her eyes. She asks why Homare is here. Homare gives her a smile and tells her everything is fine now. She's here to save her. Her words touch Xion's heart, and she couldn't help but cry and give Homare a tight hug. But Homare didn't bring water. Xion is worried that they will not be able to turn back to the other island, as, according to her, there's nothing they can take from this island to maintain their living status. Xion then takes Homare to the cave she found earlier. It seems to be dark and narrow inside. Homare screams into the cave, starting in a lot of bats. Seeing the bats flying out of the cave, Homare assumes that there's nothing edible on this island. There's some water, but it's polluted because of the bats' feces. If they drink this water, they'll be infected with some kind of disease. The important thing for them to do now is collect plastic bottles to repair their bamboo raft. Xion gives Homare a hand and they start working together. Xion asks Homare for the use of those plastic bottles. Homare tells her that when they got here, they sailed in the direction of the ocean currents. Now that they want to get back more easily, they need to tie the bottles to the raft and leave them floating. But it's surely easier said than done. Xion is highly dehydrated while Homare is losing her energy from all of this journey. They stored the polluted water in the bat cave in two bottles and placed them on the raft, hoping the UV rays from the sun would kill the bacteria in them, but the result didn't come close to meeting their expectations. Xion can't take it anymore. She really wants to drink the water. Homare stops her from doing such a stupid act because if she drank the polluted water, she'd throw up and get diarrhea, which would lead to more water loss. But she needs to be hydrated anyway, so Homare has an idea. In fact, water can be absorbed via the large intestine, and Xion can take water into her body through her anus without worrying about getting diarrhea. Homare asks Xion to take off her panties and point her butt up high. Homare then keeps water in her mouth. I don't think I need to tell you what happens next. Let your imagination fly. After giving Xion water, it's Homare's turn to take water. She takes off her panties and points her butt at Xion, asking her to do the same as she did to her adding that she would use her tongue to open the way for water to sneak in. It's all for their survival. After the two have been hydrated, Xion can't stop thinking about what happened and tells Homare to keep it a secret and stay silent about this incident until they die. The island eventually starts appearing in front of their eyes. The two put in their last effort to sail to the island where their friends have been standing at the beach waving for them. The girls give each other a big hug as they finally reunite. And that's it for today's anime summary. I hope you guys enjoyed today's edition. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as usual, please follow for more anime summaries in the video. Take care, everyone.